All right, Jim, thank you. How much do you really know about Lake Murray? When it was built in the 1920s, it was the largest man-made lake in America. The lake is nearly 50,000 acres with roughly 500 miles of shoreline. At one time, that area was known as the Saluda River Valley. It was settled in the 1750s by German, Swiss, and Dutch immigrants with two major towns, Dutch Fork and Saxagatha. But those towns are long gone. They were buried in water after SCENG bought the land, creating the lake. All that remains now are remnants of a past that few people alive know little about. On any given day, you'll find Steve Franklin and John Baker on the waters of Lake Murray, searching for the past, one dive at a time. A lot of people think it's eerie, but I mean, you know, it's, it's really not this step back in time. These two men have devoted hours discovering a forgotten time and place that sits at the bottom of this man-made lake. There are a lot of towns throughout the lake, a lot of old churches, schools, cemeteries. When SCENG purchased the land to build Lake Murray, 75% of it was just a wooded area. The rest of the land consisted of nine small towns and communities, home to nearly 5,000 residents. 90 years ago, in 1927, SCENG paid to relocate them all and build new structures elsewhere. All that remains now are bits and pieces of the past, some big, some small. One of the bigger pieces is the old stone house. It was built in the 1800s. Despite its size, the murky water made it hard to find. When we found it, we actually swam through the front door and hit our heads on the back walls. <laughs> but, uh, but that was neat uh, to be able to find that and, uh, and uh, see how it's still kind of preserved. I mean, you've got all four walls and some of the rafters and the roof still. And because of that poor visibility, Steve and John rely on sonar to help in their discoveries. It gives them a clearer picture of what's on the surface nearly 200 feet down. One site that we dive a good bit is the old Wise Ferry Bridge that uh, used to span across a, a river. What was cool we found recently was a uh, stamp in the side of the structure, uh, the supports that hold the bridge that says 1911. Built. Then we were dusting off some of the old uh, concrete that support of the silt that had settled on it and found a bunch of the uh, construction workers' names that were strong. There are old roads. The roads are, are still quite identifiable. Um, they're old dirt roads. At that time, I believe, mostly traveled by horse and buggy. Uh, there probably weren't too many cars at that time. So the old roads um, are still pretty easily identifiable, especially on the side scan sonar. And that kind of helps lead us to where the old towns were. Um, sometimes there's really not nothing at all, um, except mud and rocks, you know, where it was left. But sometimes we do find uh, some pretty cool things where an old city was, and even some old home sites, too. Other discoveries include boxcars, railroad tracks, a hitching post, and cemeteries. When SENG bought the land, they offered to move the dead, but most families decided to let their loved ones rest in peace. In all, more than 2,300 graves are at the bottom of Lake Murray. Most of the cemeteries are in the 1800s. There's three different types of cemeteries, I guess you could say. There's actually old um, slave cemeteries from the time you know, of slavery at that time. And they would have the cemetery for the slaves. Then there was the smaller family plots, maybe four or five the family members buried there, just small little headstones or, or markers. And then there was the large multi-family lots. Well, as you might expect, Steve and John have heard from local families, hoping they can find their loved one's final resting place. And they expect to hear from a few more. Some of their discoveries are so far down, though, they have to take extra steps just to stay safe. And some of these dive sites uh, are really challenging to get to because, uh, the type of diving, uh, or some of these are, are really deep, way past recreational diving limits. And uh, we had to go get specialized training so we could extend time at these depths and stuff. And so the, you got the exploration factor that just keeps driving us to come back, but you also have um, the challenge of the dives. It's cold, it's dark, it's deep.
Well, as you just heard in our story there, more than 2300 graves are at the bottom of Lake Murray, but time has taken its toll on those final resting places. A little more than 20 years ago, the waters of Lake Murray were lowered, exposing the grave sites and the damage many of the graves have endured. For Susan Brown, her great great grandparents are buried there. She explains why her family decided to leave the graves where they were when SCENG bought the land. They gave the families the choice. They could either pour a four, minute, four inch slab on top of the graves or they would move the graves. And my granddaddy said, just leave them alone and let them remain at peace. Uh, he said the slabs would be on top so nothing could happen to them. And all these years later, the slabs have not worked? No, they're all broke up, big holes, gaps. You know, they've just crumbled. Well, Susan says she would like to see the water lowered one more time so descendants of those buried at the lake can get in one final visit. Yeah, I would. I'd like for it to go down one more time so I could get one more visit in my lifetime. And I think a lot of people uh, would enjoy seeing the history because there is a lot of history in that lake. It's not just fishing and swimming, but there's a lot of history in that lake.